space is permeated by a range of meanings and symbols associated with a religious belief or is dedicated to a religious purpose and thus worthy of great respect. So, how do sacred spaces come to be? And can they be shared by other religions or secular activities? What can we learn from sacred spaces that can help us care for public and private spaces in the secular world? This film explores these ideas by examining a range of sacred spaces in Trinidad, primarily Gangadhara, which translates into the flow of water. This one-day pilgrimage occurs at the Marianne River in the north coast of Trinidad, and a range of Hindu activities are performed there. Gangadhara is inspired by Ganga Dushara, an ancient river festival which originated in India. Ganga Dushara commemorates the descent of the holy river Ganges from heaven to earth. In Trinidad, this is represented by a murti carried along the path. We tell this story through the perspective of the key founder, Ravindranath Maharaj, better known as Raviji. Ravindra, if Rama is coming with his army to fight your country, what are you going to do? I said, I'm taking a cue from Bibisha. <laughs> I will run and bow to his feet. This, uh, this RSS person talking about the great thing that I found. There is no coincidence with my clothes I'm wearing. Talk to me! Say, you fool. Your job is to take up your gun and shoot Rama. And expect him to bless you for it. Powerful, strange, dramatic, sacrilegious words coming from him, caught him. You'll find in Indian, um, India, patriotism flowing through his bone. But he found it that he has to teach me patriotism to my country. We were living in Durham Hills Road in the Monstrat Ward, and we had Cocoa Rivers. And being Hindus, a river festival was also maintained. There were two different days in the year, and that's my mind, although it's very small, but it's very clear. And um, I assume one was Makar Sankranti and one was Ganga Dashera, Ganga Festival. Our family came out of the Coco and built in Kaparo, but I cannot remember the festival in Kaparo itself. I suggest that the reason is that that was an early indication of ecological problem. Because they wouldn't go to a river that is polluted and nasty or apavitra. And it is because I experienced it in the child I could have connected in India with it. So I want to bring back this Ganga the festival. When Saloni was leaving for America to study, Professor Narayan Singh said, boy, when we good children go to America, they have learned America more. They hardly know Trinidad before they go and they never get to know Trinidad. We should take our children around before they leave to go and study. And he organized a three-day trip around Trinidad. And we just kept traveling and traveling. And then when you reach a bridge close to Ben, that, uh, to Blanchichev, it's a place he stops. And one of the reasons is because the bridge is there. Second reason, it was a big um, silk cotton tree. The silk cotton tree is always big and majestic and filled with a lot of stories and superstitions and powers and so on. So it has a magical thing about the tree and the place where is it. And I crossed the river, I went in the river and paid my respect, the traditional respect before going in the river and went across. Then my wife Sujata um, started a call for me to come back because she got scared about going into this place. And that was something that marked off the early period in Gangadhara, that people were scared about this place. All through the trip, my mind was in that place. 
when I come back home, I remember I just felt I had to go back. I had this great desire. So I took up the car and without telling her where I'm going, I left and I'm gone. I didn't want her to stop me. So I went. When I reached there, I entered the river and I started walking up. And as I walk up and I go beyond the second bend, I think it is, something very shocking happened. I saw this place where I had a recurrent dream. All the difference was that there was a white mandir there. When you look at the place in the dream where the mandir was, it has no way that mandir could be built there. But somehow in the dream, there was a big white mandir there on that slope where the channel is right now. That dream there hooked me to the place now. The whole being of the place it hooked me to the place. I don't know if it was Kartik was coming up or Ganga Dasharha was coming up. And then I um, the, I told the people, let's go up by this place I saw. We went to do Ganga Puja. I remember Rajmata Bhagwat being there, Maya there, Gita is there. And um, they form a circle and then the ladies started dancing the water and all because it's very shallow and all that. So they enjoyed it, the puja, they enjoyed going out in Blanchishas and, and all that and the spot. So next year now we just followed and do it again and it became a project. That space satisfies a few of the Shastric reasons why you could have a Tirat. Because uh, it's become a, it becomes a pilgrimage place, a very interesting type of pilgrimage place. It must have a place of compelling natural beauty conducive to meditation and the rituals and must be a river, a river by a river, makes it a tirat. In our tradition, all sites are sacred. Um, the, 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 the earth is my altar, and every part is sacred to us. Most ancient traditions, they had deities to the earth, deities to the water, deities to the sky and the mountains and thunder and lightning and so on. So everything was regarded as sacred, and so, he decided that we should probably consider making this a pilgrimage site. He communicated with a Swami from India who a year later brought uh, water and soil from 2,000 sacred sites in India. And we embedded that in the bedrock there one year later, 25 years ago with puja and all the necessary rituals and it was then declared a sacred site and we come here annually to celebrate the Ganga Dashra festival. people come to Ganga Thara. In that time when we started it, that was still very strong. You understand? But here are people now leaving all over the country and coming across and going there. Now we had the same phenomena for Kartik Nahan, right? But so this Ganga pull is very important. So how? I remember people so come out and congratulate me, boy. You real powerful, you know. You could get people to come to this thing quite in the bush here in planchy chairs until I got a check. But Ravi who if you invite people anywhere, they will come to listen to you or something. Then I realized the power of the word Ganga. We 
offer a space for people coming together to do different types of um, sanskaras and, and rituals, rites and rituals and pujas that we need to do and function throughout the year and our, that our Hindu calendar demands. Ganga Dhara started for me. One of the things that was missing there was a waterway to do the sanskar, Mundan sanskar. So we offer a space for it there. In the water itself, we have the Ganesh Murti because we start our worship with Ganesh. Tulsi Ghat. Why um, Tulsi that composed of one? Ganga Puja, that's where the Puja is done, proper. And uh, then on the other side, we have the place where, um, where the Pravachan, the talks, the discourses are given. People come there and make cook. And making cook by the river naturally is fall and dock. They're all Indians, mostly Hindus, themselves who come and make these cooks and so on. So what we found, whenever we go, we have to clean up a lot of bones, fire, so fire places that is burning. Uh, you could see chulhas and things made and all that is a little vexing. I'm cutting the bamboo and um, to make machan and then I throw away and so on. And uh, we know the problem that is going to cause. And we have a stake there we, for the for the intactness of the of the, the space and all the different diversities. I of the Asura, and I have come because of your doing. I have come. To wreak havoc on this environment. I can only bear the weight of the mountains and the oceans. What plastic asura is doing to this earth is unbearable. They have taken the festival, which is about water, and broadened it to make it ecological. Mm -hmm. But for the whole day, they'll be up and down the river. Right and just doing their thing, okay. trying to engage people mm. because mm. it's about educating people. Mm. So, and when we mm. do seminars, people mm. don't come. Mm. The people so, are but here. But here, that's right. So we engage the people mm. as they are walking up and down the mm. river mm. and challenge them to think a little further. Mm. I have had for many years my brother with this special task every year to make a sieve across the river. He makes that with wire. So whatever is flowing down, it flows to a spot before him and all are collected there. And we also are aware that there are religions in the country that uh, our tradition was very, very close to their tradition. We have seen photographs of Orisha and we thought that we should um, extend our re uh, relationship to the um, Isam movement in Santa Cruz headed by Ia uh, Sangha Wubni and we invited her organization to come and be our guest and um, accept an award from us for the River Festival every year. Orisha is forces of nature. They manifest at all levels and all times.
all around us is Orisha. But what is more important is that many of us do recognize that Orisha live in us, dwell in us. And we talk about Orisha as something external and we go to Orisha Shrine. All the shrine of Orisha live in this flesh, this form that we take as sacred temples. We come out into an open space where we see a sacred space and give praise and thanks individually for the shrines that dwell within us. We believe in the system of divination and whenever we're going to do something that is important, we go to the divinities and we consult and they would tell us. So when we came here, we didn't come here by accident. This piece of gong was chosen. But having said that, even though this gong was chosen to do what we had to do on it, what makes it sacred is what we bring to it, how we prepare ourselves and what we do here on a daily basis. There's only one, what we call Ori, or consciousness in the world. Hindu came out of a situation, right? We came out of another situation. The native people came out of a situation called by many different names. But we all tap in to the one source that is life, that is consciousness, that is intelligent, that intelligent being and the form of it. So that is why I see many of the deities similar. The river is sacred in my belief system as in the Hindu belief system. We call her Oshun. And so when I come to give respect to Ganga Mai, I give respect to Oshun. Um, I think that there is so much that is similar in my belief system and in the Hindu belief system, as well as in the belief system of the First Peoples. These so-called, as my brother Ravi calls them, these pagan religions. So, we received the award from Ravi for the environment, the Gangadhara Award for the environment. But it was the river and what we did with the river that make them get interested to give us the award. So you realize we were on the same path. The environment was important. Shango here, and we get Oshun, right? So uh, they are the two patrons of the shrine. Well, this is Esu here, the guy of all portals, the master key. We call him the master key. You always meet Esu and appease Esu before we enter any spiritual space or before we pray so that you will carry the messages safely to Orun, which is known as heaven. We call heaven. Appease Esu, you touch, you touch your head, you touch your navel, and you proceed into the. This is the Pali, where we do Orisha service. We praise the Orisha and sing and chant to call their ancestors and lineages before us to come to give praise with us for life and continued Iri and Ashe in this physical plane that we experience at this point in time in life. What's very interesting is that when we decided um, to give the award to them, we were a little worried about how our people would react. Because here was this very Hindu sacred Ganga thing. And and um, we now invite in a Shango thing and the concept of people who are Shango and all of that misconception as it is. Um, we were worried, Gita and I. But we wouldn't stop, we made it. And that day I realized that we had to give our people a little more credit than we really give our people 
because we assume certain things and it isn't. Without making a big thing about, um, you know, like one of the problems um, or issues at least in the Hindu tradition that um, only Brahmins will, will be um, have the responsibility and the right to officiate and to discourse. Um, our organization never make a big issue of it, but. We work to do what we what we feel is right. So we have an inclusion thing that we everybody is included, and therefore women also. This is why um, it was natural for me not to keep out women in my training, even in the traditional aspects. So, and then hand over to who I thought is best of my students, a woman. Raviji has always been very strict and a disciplinarian, not that I am not, but I think my mood is different, my manner is different, and approaching, talking to people, interacting with people, maybe they feel um, comfortable talking um, to a female, especially since the deity connected to Gangadhara is also Ganga Mata, um, a female. I am charting my own path, but I am very loyal to the vision that Raviji has put to us because I have grown up with him and I appreciate the vision he has in terms of who the Hindu should be and how we are connected to this land and to our community. Growing up, I learned from him very early the phrase enlightened citizenship. I think what makes me a bit different now in terms of division and focus is I am going to be in charge of building buildings. We are at a juncture where we need to actually have space and infrastructure where we can work more comfortably in the different projects that we are doing right now at the Kendra. We are looking to see what kind of agricultural produce and plants we can grow in the space. We use a lot of mangoes for our um, feasts. We all know mango tilkari. We need mango wood for um, our fire rituals. We need mango leaves for the ceremonies. Then we also, shatine, we, um, we need it for cooking. Um, coconut we use as part of um, cooking as well for the festival. So hairy leaves, now everyone has gotten accustomed to the paper leaves, not the healthiest, not the best. So all of these things will um, help us to become self-sufficient and will serve us and serve the community. So it also creates a kind of environmental consciousness and awareness for all those who are going to be involved here. The young women do feel a little inspired when they, when they look at me, I interact with them a lot. I actually have a few initiated students and the majority of them are female. There are really no close neighbors to the Gangadhara space, but um, people live within a mile, mile and a half and then out in the city and so on. And whatever it is, that's their community and community spaces. You know, there's a kind of ownership of one must have a kind of ownership with people living around and all that. We haven't had any kind of problems in that way. And on top of that, every year we employ people to um, help us there. The first 10 years, everything, you see, everybody used to um, give free labor was voluntary. And next five years or so was a, a mix of um, paid and, um, and thing. And I think for the last um, 10 years or so, it's almost totally paid uh, labor. We have people who, um, who are involved in it, right? Um, in a very um, tangible way. And then we have people who um, dress up in, as the characters, the Ramlila characters, young people. So they, they are very much interested in taking part. And uh, I guess um, we are hoping that because of, of their experiences um, 
with, with, with the program, um, this will continue. So we are hoping um, that um, when, when they grow up and they have children, that this, um, it will continue. So my prognosis is that I think it will continue, but it will take some time. Um, and we don't know what form it will evolve into, but I, I think Ganga, Dhara um, will, will uh, continue to be uh, celebrated. When I went to India, I was introduced to something called Shakha. Somebody is in charge and you gather children and you play with them. And then they learn drills, they learn about Hinduism, the issue about regularity, punctuality and all of those kind of things. All of these things that constitute human sanskar are integrated in Shakha. But to have an organized society is a dream of that. What that helped me do is that first that was a radical thing to go and get involved in when I thought because I go in, I see myself as a pundit. From small I was expected to be a pundit and therefore my training supposed to fulfill that. <laughs> they, 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 they were having us outside and we played. I realized in time, what I was coming conscious of was more the Hindu community rather than Puja and um, Katha and Jandi. So it was a, 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 an introduction to social organization and our place in the cosmos of people and our history and all those kind of things. And that has shaped me very much because in many ways I stand outside and very deliver my work outside the traditional world. This is why I say, who am I? And this is a problem with Trinidad has. Eh? I am a Hindu, unapologetically. I'm an Indian without apology, and I'm a Trini without apology. And no Indian or Hindu must ask me to be less a Trini, to be a Hindu or Indian. And no Trini must ask me to be less a Hindu and Indian than to be a Trini.